Hello and welcome back to Bicycle Eggs and another edition of Anniversary Albums. Today we're looking at albums that are having a significant anniversary in the month of April 2024. For those of you who are new to this series, when I say a significant anniversary, I'm talking about one that ends in a 5 or a 0. So 50th, 35th, 40th, 25th, that sort of thing. You'll get the hang of it as we go along. I've picked 10 albums as always. It was another really hard month to narrow this list down to 10. There's a bunch I've left off, so please do let me know in the comments which ones you think I should have included. Because you always come up with ones that I don't think of, and I love that. Anyway, let's get straight into it with an album that's having its 50th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 5th of April, 1974. And that is Secret Treaties by Blue Oyster Cult. Now, Blue Oyster Cult are the first of a couple of bands I'm going to be talking about this month that I'm still sort of getting into the catalogue of. I have some of their albums. I don't have all of them. But um, this is one of my favourites of the ones that I've collected so far. It's, uh, it's an interesting album. Uh, there's, you know, some really good songs on here. I know a lot of people really love the sort of black and white period of Blue Oyster Cult. And I've got to admit, I've got, I think, two of the three albums, first three albums, and I absolutely really love this one and the, the other one that I own. But this is, you got, you know, Career of Evil, it's got Subhuman, Dominance and Submission, great song, Me 262, or ME262, um, KG Cretans, Harvester of Eyes, Flaming Telepaths, Astronomy. I mean, Flaming Telepaths, you know, classic song. It's, it's a wonderful album. It's like their third album. It's really, you know, got some heavy bits in it, and uh, I really, really enjoy it. it. They're definitely a band I'm enjoying exploring and will enjoy continuing to explore as I go along. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 55th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 7th of April, 1969. It is this artist's second album, and that is Songs from a Room by Leonard Cohen. I love Leonard Cohen. I grew up with Leonard Cohen because my mother was a huge Leonard Cohen fan. It was one of the few sort of artists that she listened to that wasn't uh, orchestral classical music. I mean, you've got the absolutely classic Bird on the Wire on this album. You know, you've got wonderful other songs, you know, Story of Isaac, A Bunch of Lonesome Heroes, The Partisan. I mean, that's a, a classic Leonard Cohen song. So is Seems So Long Ago, Nancy. Uh, you know, you've got You Know Who I Am, The Butcher, The Old Revolution, Tonight Will Be Fine. There's a bunch of really good... This is still very early Leonard Cohen, so he's still, you know, mostly acoustic. It's, uh, you know, he's got that voice that, you know, people either love or hate. It definitely took me a while to get used to Leonard Cohen's voice. Uh, but I love this album. It's, it's one of his finest works, I think. Speaking of artists that a lot of people either love or hate his voice, and it took me some time to get used to... The next album I'm going to have a look at is also having its 55th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 9th of April 1969, and that is Nashville Skyline by Bob Dylan. This is his out-and-out -out country album. You know, he'd done sort of hints of country music earlier. He'd certainly sung in that sort of country croon as early back as sort of Lay Lady Lay on Blonde on Blonde. But this was his first sort of like out and out country record. You know, he's recording with Johnny Cash. He's got Peter Drake in his band and Charlie Daniels. And, you know, he's doing absolutely country songs. This has got Girl from the North Country, which is his sort of duet with Johnny Cash. This has got Lay Lady Lay on it. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Um, I thought it was on Blonde on Blonde, I don't know why. But he was doing that country croon earlier than this, but this is the first album where he did it like the whole way through. 
you know, you've got Peggy Day, I threw it all away, Nashville Skyline Rag. You've got Country Pie. Country Pie is an interesting song because the first version of that song I ever heard was the one that was done by The Nice on their Five Bridges album where they uh, sort of merged it with one of Bach's Brandenburg concertos. Um, sort of mental thing that only Keith Emerson would come up with. Absolutely wonderful. The original version on here is wonderful too. You know, this might not be the greatest Bob Dylan album to get into if you're not a big fan of country music. You'd probably go for something else. But I really like this album. The next album we're going to have a look at is an album that's relatively new to me. Uh, it's having its 40th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 12th of April 1984 and that is Grace Under Pressure by Rush. Now of course I've been doing a whole series where I discover Rush. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to the episode on Grace Under Pressure that I did with the wonderful John the Music Nut. It's a great episode. This is a great album. These early 80s Rush albums are some of my favourites. Um, this one is no exception. I mean, it's got the wonderful Distant Early Warning. It's got After Image, Red Sector A. One of their Red songs. They did a number of Red songs, I've noticed, over their career. Um, you've got The Enemy Within, uh, The Body Electric, Kid Gloves, Red Lenses, another one of their Red songs between the wheels they're definitely this is in their sort of synthy period so if you're into the hard rock rush you're probably not so much into this i love this because this is sort of new wavy it's got a bit of police feel to it some of it it's um right up my alley musically i love those 70s hard rock rush albums too i've really been enjoying those as i've done the bicycle legs discovers rush series but i really do love these early 80s albums uh, especially up to and including Power Windows. But uh, highly recommended. Love this album. The next album we're going to have a look at is another band like Blue Oyster Cult that I don't have the whole collection of. I'm still sort of exploring their catalogue as I go along, as I find their albums. But this is probably my favourite of their albums that I've found so far. It was, it's celebrating its 45th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 13th of April, 1979. And that is Black Rose, a rock legend by Thin Lizzy. Now, although he'd been in and out of the band a couple of times, this is the only album that actually features Gary Moore sort of on the whole album. And I sort of knew Gary Moore's music before I knew Thin Lizzy's, except for I had a compilation many, many years ago that had the song Chinatown on it. And of course, I knew the boys are back in town. That was, you know, played on the radio and that sort of thing. But this album, I really, really love. I think it's got a wonderful feel to it. You know, there's a bit of the Celtic feel to it, as well as the hard rock. And, you know, Phil Lynott's very melodic. He's a great singer. I really like his songwriting as well. You know, this has got Do Anything You Want To, Toughest Street in Town, uh, Waiting for an Alibi is a great song. Really like that. Sarah's Beautiful. Um, got to Give It Up. You know, uh, Get Out of Here. You know, which is co-written by Midjure from Ultravox. And a lot of people don't realise that Midjure actually played a little bit for live with Thin Lizzy before he went into Ultravox. So, man of many talents, Midjure. Um, you know, you've got With Love, you've got uh, Royce and Dub, uh, a rock legend, wonderful. It's a really great album. As I say, I've got like about half the Thin Lizzy catalog so far, I think. And this one's my favorite of the ones that I've uh, collected so far. So, yeah, great album. The next album we're going to have a look at is our oldest album for this month. It's having its 60th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 17th of April, 1964. It is the debut album by this legendary band. 
and that is the Rolling Stones, self-titled. Also known as England's newest hit makers in the US. But this is the original pressing. This is, you can see it's a, getting a bit tatty, the spine's getting a bit split. And this is an original Australian pressing, my one. I love the 60 stones, the sort of stones that has that R&B, it has that blues, but it also has a bit of a beat music feeling, you know, following in on this, in the steps of the Beatles and that sort of thing, but being a bit grittier with it. Um, this is mostly cover versions. Um, there's a couple of original songs on here. You know, you've got their wonderful version of Route 66 to kick things off. You got I Just Want to Make Love to You, the old Willie Dixon song. You got Honest I Do, Mona, uh, Bo Diddley song. Um, you've got a couple of songs that are group written under their um, under their pseudonym Nanka Felge. You've got Now I've Got a Witness and Little by Little, which is co-written with Phil Spector. Uh, you've got their version of Carol by Chuck Berry. Um, you know, Can I Get a Witness? you got the very first Jagger and Richards song, which is uh, Tell Me You're Coming Back. Um, you've got their wonderful version of Walking the Dog, which, you know, makes it onto a lot of compilation albums. So, yeah, it was a great way to start a career. Obviously, they would go on to bigger and better things, but I love this sort of really, really early, almost naive sounding stones. It's great stuff. I've done a 60s Stones studio albums ranked with the wonderful Peter Kerr from Rock Day Dream Nation. I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can check that out and see how we both felt about those wonderful, I think there's eight albums that the Stones did in the 60s and uh, we ranked them all. Yeah, it's a really good show. Definitely check it out. The next album we're going to have a look at is having its 35th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 17th of April 1989. It's an underrated album in this artist's catalogue as far as I'm concerned, but it's one of my absolute favourites. And that is Blaze of Glory by Joe Jackson. You know, this is kind of a concept album. It The, the songs all sort of... Uh, segue into one another except for obviously the break between side one and side two you've got Joe not doing all the vocals on this album but uh, he's a, a, you know he's got a crack band they've recorded it really well in the studio it's got wonderful tomorrow's world it's got me and you against the world uh, which is a really great up tempo number down to London was one of the singles off this album Sentimental thing, beautiful ballad, really beautifully orchestrated by Joe. He does his own orchestrations. You've got the wonderful Greek flavored instrumental Acropolis Now, and then the title track ends outside one. Uh, you've got the wonderful Rant and Rave, a lot of which is in 5 4 time. Love it when people do odd time signatures in music. It's the prog guy in me. Love it to death. 19 Forever was the other single, probably the more successful single, I think, off this album. Um, you've got another beautiful ballad in The Best I Can Do. Uh, you've got the wonderful Evil Empire, which is a real sort of strike against the Reagan era and all that sort of thing, real sort of a protest song. Um, you've got the almost sort of techno, uh, electro uh, discipline and then it ends with the beautiful human touch with a lot of really lovely violin on it. It's a it's a long album. It's nearly an hour long, even though it's only on a single disc on vinyl. But it's a wonderful album, and it's a really overlooked album for me in Joe Jackson's catalogue. Well worth checking out. The next album we're going to have a look at is also having its 35th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released one week later on the 24th of April 1989. It's one of the biggest hits this guy ever had. It's his first solo album as opposed to working with his band. And that is Full Moon Fever by Tom Petty. Now, most of the heartbreakers end up appearing on this album here and there. 
but this is Tom Petty's first sort of, you know, album which he released as a solo album, not under the moniker of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, produced by Jeff Lynne with Tom Petty and Mike Campbell. Uh, you know, he had some huge hits on this album. You know, I Won't Back Down, Free Fallen, Running Down a Dream, you know, and they're all on side one. So, it, you know, you think it's a little bit front loaded this album but you know the songs on side two are great too you know um depending on you um feeling a whole lot better feel a whole lot better um the apartment song zombie zoo lots of really great tom petty on here it's definitely got that jeff lynn sheen to the production which again is one of those either love or hate things i rather like it i think it works well with tom petty and his voice and his songs of course, this comes after Tom and Jeff had collaborated in uh, the Travelling Wilburys. So, almost has a bit of that Travelling Wilburys vibe to it. But it's a, it's a wonderful album. I really like it. Is it my favourite Tom Petty album? I don't know. It's definitely right up there, though. The next album we're going to have a look at is the youngest album we're looking at today. It's only having its 20th anniversary in the month of April. It was originally released on the 27th of April, nine, uh, 2004. It's one of my favourite albums by this band, and that is Marvels by Marillion. It's such a good album. You know, this came up after... Um, and arachnophobia, which really divided people. I think this one brought a lot of fans back in, certainly the ones who are still paying attention. You know, you've got The Invisible Man, you've got You're Gone, you've got Don't Hurt Yourself, Fantastic Place, Neverland. You know, all of these are still songs that they play in concert. So they hold this album in very high regard too. But you've got, on the, the extended one, you've got wonderful things like Ocean Cloud. And, um, yeah, you know, which is like a 17-minute epic. I think this is one of their very, very finest albums. I definitely need to do some Marillion content on this channel. Look forward to that in the, in the hopefully not too distant future. Because they're a band that I, I love to bits. They're one of my favourite, favourite bands. And speaking of bands that are one of my favourite, favourite bands, this is their debut album. It's celebrating its 55th anniversary in the month of April. It's the last one we're going to be having a look at today. It was originally released on the 28th of April, 1969. And that is the Chicago Transit Authority. You can see the, the logo much better on the back cover than the front cover. Of course, this is the band that would end up becoming Chicago after this album, after they got a cease and desist letter from the actual Chicago Transit Authority who run the buses and the public transport in Chicago. Even people who don't really like Chicago will admit, you know, that this was a great album. People who think that Chicago are just a soppy ballad band you know they know the songs for you know if you leave me now and hard to say i'm sorry and those sorts of things need to explore this early chicago music because terry kath was one of the best guitar players who ever was on the planet Jimi hendrix respected the hell out of him took the band on tour with him before they had their first record out and um they could rock like hell wonderful jazzy horns, complex compositions, you know, sometimes even a little bit proggy, certainly very extended on this album. Uh, you've got the incredible introduction, the song introduction that, that starts the album, which really is an introduction to the band. You know, the lyrics are sort of an introduction to the band. And then, you know, several of the players get to play little solos. Um, it's just an incredible way to kick off an album. You've got the wonderful Does Anybody Really Know What Time It Is, which a couple of years later would be a hit single for them. You've got Beginnings. Absolutely gorgeous song. Lots of acoustic guitar on that one. 
Um, great horn arrangement. Robert Lamb writes most of the songs on this album. And I, Robert Lamb is my favorite member of Chicago. I love his songwriting. Um, you know, you've got the wonderful Listen, you've got Poem 58, you've got Questions 67 and 68. Just great stuff. And that's just disc one, because this is a double album, and their first three albums would all be double albums. You know, you've also got the incredible long form, like 14, 15 minute long instrumental liberation. You've got the great song Someday. You've got South California Purples, which gets really down and dirty and bluesy. Um, you've got their wonderful version of I'm a Man, which is one of my favorite cover versions. Just an incredible album, top to bottom. And man, does this album rock. Both Terry Kath's guitar and the horn section will just knock your socks off if you give this album a chance to. Brilliant, brilliant album. So there you have it, everyone. Those are my 10 anniversary albums for the month of April 2024. As I said, please let me know in the comments which albums I left out, which albums you think I should have included, which of these albums you love, which maybe you don't care for so much. I love reading the comments, so please do let me know which are your favourite albums for April 2024. Please do like, share and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. If you're new to the channel, please go and have a look at some of my other videos. I have everything playlisted, so if you want to look at my Bicycle Legs Discovers Rush series, for example, I have a playlist for those. If you want to see some of my studio albums rank shows, I have a playlist for those. If you want to see my appearances on other people's channels, I also have a playlist for those. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Bicycle Legs on Instagram and Twitter, and I have a dedicated Bicycle Legs Facebook page. Links are all in the doobly-doo. Please come and check those out and give them a follow and join in the conversation. I'd really love to have you there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.